Don't you just wish there was a fuss-free way of making a delicious coffee? Yeah. Fuss-free. Mm. We're going to have to look at a method that the, the speciality industry hates, I reckon. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, excuse me one second. Hello. Oh, hi, Mum. <laughs> you just interrupted. I was having a chat with Max. What are you up to? You're having a coffee? <laughs> what are the chances? What are you making? Can't remember what the intro was. What was the intro? Hmm. Ah, yes, the intro was, I've just sat down and I haven't had a coffee, so probably should go ahead and make one of those. Just bear with me a second, guys. Alrighty then. That is better. Oh. Hi guys, and welcome back to Bowl Brothers. I'm Max, you're watching our How to Brew series. We are the Bowl Brothers that are here to demystify the world of coffee and help you brew better experiences. Today, we're talking about the mocha pot. Imagine me not here sitting in my studio, but imagine me more of a Jeremy Clarkson type character. Some kind of journalist, okay? Get ready. The infamous mocha pot, loved by many and hated by some, first burst onto the scene in 1933 when cult household name and founder Alfonso Bialetti invented an entirely new way of brewing your coffee. It's a simple device whose three-part construction lends itself to producing a repeatably well-extracted cup of deliciousness. And it's fairly unique in that the end product is a kind of filter espresso hybrid. It's also a simple device whose three-part construction lends itself to producing a disgustingly ashy, bitty, brown mess of sludge. What you get is in large part going to depend on what you put in, and it's your job not to completely mess it up. Easy then to see, given that there's really not a good deal of information out there on how not to mess it up, why this bubbly little blighter is so polarizing. First, let's address some of the myths. Myth number one, I need to have crema or the oily, foamy stuff that you find on top of espresso, otherwise my mocha pot isn't good. No, crema tastes disgusting, even in espresso. I totally understand why people like crema as an experiential checkbox, but when it comes to brewing a mocha pot, the sacrifices that you have to make to achieve crema, which would include grinding too fine, increasing brew pressure, and probably using a dark roasted coffee, do more to hurt your cup than they do to help it. Myth number two. I am burning the coffee in my mocha pot because it's too hot. No, you're not. Coffee is roasted at temperatures in excess of 200 degrees Celsius. And so no matter how much you try, hitting it with the boilingiest of boiling water is not gonna burn it. The tastes associated with burning are more likely due to other factors. So predominantly roast type, uh, factors like grind size, water volume, but let's not worry about that for now because we'll, we'll get onto these issues in a little bit more detail. Myth number three. I need to be brewing espresso with my mocha pot because it says mocha express on the side. No, you don't. And we're gonna leave it at that. Depending on what level of mocha pot aficionado you happen to be will dictate how much of what I'm about to say to you will make sense. But what I will guarantee is that no matter who you are, king of mocha pots or otherwise, you're about to learn something. So let's talk about what we consider to be the most important elements when it comes to brewing great coffee with the mocha pot. Topic number one. Should I use hot water or cold water? Oh yeah, this is a juicy one. Well, Bialetti says use cold, but pretty much every speciality coffee professional that hasn't thrown theirs in the bin says use hot. Why? Well, in theory, it's because using cold water means that while you heat the water, you will also heat the ground coffee. 
This, it's hypothesized, increases the amount of bitterness in the cup. In real reality, however, the idea that you get increased bitterness by using cold water is a load of old rubbish. Anyway, using cold water does two things. It increases the contact time between the coffee and the water, and it also means that you get a larger range of temperatures interacting with the coffee. Let's unpack that a little bit more because I feel like I'm losing a couple of you and it does matter. If you use hot water, you put your mocha pot on the stove and within seconds, you'll know this, the water already boils and moves up through your coffee. With cold water, the water actually starts to move into the coffee bed around 60 degrees. The contact time is roughly double in the case of the cold water. Now, what, what in general coffee professionals don't like to do is read real science. I've got a degree in biological sciences and so I like real science, and reading real science papers doesn't make me cry. Interestingly, there is a real science paper. A real science paper called Experimental Investigation of Steam Pressure on Coffee Extraction in a Stovetop Coffee Maker. And it is juicy. Look at that, can you see? Camera may not be focusing, I'm not too sure. Anyway. There's quite a lot you can learn from that paper. There's also quite a lot you can learn from probing a mocha pot all over and measuring different things. The difficulty is that people don't like doing that. Well, I'm here to tell you differently. If you know a little bit about extraction, you'll know that higher temperatures increase extraction. So do, lo so do longer contact times. So in theory, these two methods, hot and cold water, should produce similarly extracted cups. And yes, they do. However, we found that we got a sweeter cup with better body using cold water. In fact, the best result we had was using ambient temperature water at around 40 degrees. If you know how a mocha pot works, then you'll know that as water heats up in the base, pressure builds. This pressure forces the water up through the coffee bed and into the top of the pot. What you might not have considered is that as pressure builds and water migrates out of the base, two things happen to affect temperature. One, higher pressures mean higher boiling points. So if your water is boiling in the mocha pot base, it will actually be hotter than 100 degrees. Two, as the volume of water in the base decreases and the temperature increases, it leads to a quick vaporization of the remaining liquid. This forces a 120 degree plus water vapor up through your coffee bed actually extracting some pretty horrible tasting compounds. So an ideal recipe will need to address that. Now with that in mind, you'll have seen that a number of popular methods call for you to stop the extraction. Sorry, I should say, stop the extraction to avoid burning the coffee. Now, we've already talked about burning, so I'm gonna leave that to one side. This is normally achieved by plunging the mocha pot into iced water or running it through, or running it under a tap post brew. The problem with this, is that the predominant reason for doing this follows from a theory or theories that are flawed. Namely, that the residual heat in the mocha pot will somehow cook the coffee contained in the top. I mean, this is complete and total rubbish. The idea that aluminium stores and releases increasing amounts of heat over time, like for example, a turned on hot plate, is just nonsense. The other theory is that if you plunge it into ice water just after the brew has finished, then you'll avoid getting those nasty flavors extracted by the super hot coffee vapor. Well, if all of the water has already boiled through, then you're too late, so don't bother. There is something to be said for stopping the brew short to avoid that vapor extraction, but this messes up the brew ratios and is hard to do repeatedly. So we wouldn't necessarily recommend that. We favor a simpler method. Get your gas on high, then as soon as you see liquid coffee, turn the gas all the way down, about 10 to 20 seconds from the end of the brew, turn the gas off. This method is good for two reasons. One, you don't have to have a bucket of ice on your table in between your cornflakes and your toast. And the coffee will stay nice and warm for you to share and enjoy for longer. Next thing to talk about, don't just fill your mocha pot basket. Use a brew ratio. That is, use an amount of coffee, normally in grams, and a corresponding amount of water. 
We have a nine cup mocha pot, so we use 26 to 28 grams of coffee to 400 grams of water. It's also important to note, do try not to vary, unless you're doing experiments, try not to vary the amount of water that you have in the mocha pot base, because as this study that I read shows, the amount of air space in the mocha pot base will actually affect temperature and pressure within the mocha pot. So keep that consistent. Yours might be different. So we suggest using a 12 to 15 parts water for every one part coffee. We've looked at water temperatures. We've looked at post-brew ice slamming rituals. Let's talk about something that matters. I don't want to overstate here, but if you get these three things right, you're going to be 90% of the way to brewing fantastic coffee. Step number one buy high quality medium to light roast coffee honestly if you're somebody that enjoys dark roasted coffee but complains that their mocha pot tastes bad then this is almost certainly down to the roast style the mocha pot typically extracts more than other brew methods good and bad dark roasted coffee extracted to a high yield pretty unanimously tastes bitter and ashy it's a much harder thing to do to over extract light roasted coffee so this lends itself well to a mocha pot. Tip number two, use good water for brewing coffee. We would recommend either a sachet of third wave water, sachet, sachet I think that's French, sachet, 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 no thir sorry third wave water is American, sachet is French. Let's go with packet, let's try that again. We would recommend using a third wave water packet, and that is a sachet of minerals that you add to deionized water. Or if you're not in the mood to play the nutty professor, uh, just buy a peak water jug. Similar to Brita, just better. Finally, grind size. We're not brewing espresso, so we're not gonna grind for espresso. In fact, we would recommend something around a typical drip filter style grind. If you're unsure, start very coarse and then day by day, adjust your grind to be finer. Do that until your brew starts to taste worse and then go back a step. That's gonna be a pretty good, that's gonna be a pretty good level for grind size. Ah, <sighs> right. I think it's time to get Alex in. Alex? Alex? Oh my goodness, I'm bored. Mm. Yeah, I was listening to the whole thing and I pretty much fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, well, I actually did fall asleep. Yeah. Hence why I've got a coffee. Yeah. So We were gonna show you our recipe, but we've been talking shop for nearly 10 minutes now and I think it's time to let you in on a little secret. I love secrets. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to see that? <laughs> I didn't even realise. <laughs> Brewing a mocha pot is not about surgical precision. It's about the whole experience. It's about family. It's about conversation. It's more about great food than it is about great coffee. It's evocative. It's social. And it's downright sassy. So listen up, people. Here are our tips for getting the most sass from your mocha pot. First, song recommendation. Mm, I thought long and hard about this one. We fell onto Crazy P. And we love Crazy P, we play a lot of Crazy P in the shops. So I thought probably Night Rain by Crazy P would be a good place. It's kind of jolly, it's kind of, it's kind of funky and, and evocative of what we're trying to, trying to get across to you. I'm gonna put a little recommendation, bing! Is it gonna be right there, right between my hands? Bing! Wait, let's watch this. Let's try and time it together. One, two, three. Bing! bing. Damn it. Do it again. One, two, three. Bing! Cool. Anyway. Invite your family for breakfast. Prepare something fitting of a Mediterranean banquet. Choose a sunny day. Set at the table near a window. Phones away. Smiles out. Wake up early. Get ready. Put on a little bit of your favourite perfume and swagger downstairs. Your mocha pot should take pride of place. Centre stage. Trust us, if we could have it burst through a velvet curtain wearing a sequin dress right now, we would. Remember to laugh. 
Remember to ask interesting questions. Remember to share with others first. Remember that with some fantastic coffee, delicious food, funky music, and some people that you like, you've got a seriously lovely experience on your hand. That is what brewing a mocha pot is all about. Just kidding. Of course, we're gonna tell you a recipe. This is a how to brew video. We're gonna use 26 grams of coffee to 400 ml of water, it's as simple as that. And we're gonna use a six out of 10 on our, on our grind scale. So just a bit past medium in terms of medium to coarse. And it's super simple. We're gonna have the water ready in the bottom part of the mocha pot. And we used ambient temperature, so room temperature is perfect. And then we got a little cup, as you could see in the video, and we put the middle piece, that little filter piece into the cup, and then dosed in our coffee in there, just so you can use it to, to flatten out the bed a bit. If you put the coffee in, in the center part into the water, it's quite difficult to shake it around without water getting everywhere. So you wanna, wanna get the, the coffee nice and, and flat in the bed in there, and then just put the top on, super simple, nice and tight. So just pop it onto the heat, high heat, and keep an eye on it. So you want to keep an eye on the coffee coming out of the top, extracting to the top. And then when we see that, the second it comes through, turn the gas down to a low heat and let it extract through. And then maybe 10, 20 seconds in, just towards the end, we're gonna turn the gas off entirely and just let it continue brewing until the end. That's simple. Forgotten something. Filter papers. Why isn't it focusing on my face? Filter papers. You can put filter papers in your in your mock pot if you want. Uh, it makes a cleaner cut. We didn't like it as much, but it's easier to clean up. Um, you can pre-rinse them. I think we did that, didn't we, in the shop as well? Yeah, but then you've got to buy filter papers. Then you've got to buy filter papers. Yeah, most people out there that have a mock pot, that if you're watching this video, even if you're thinking, but this is about making it simple, and I have to buy filter papers and cut them to size, Certainly. which is a bit frustrating. Certainly after that last spiel with our glossy images, they're going to be thinking, that's what I want. True. And really the most important thing is to have a nice small cup. Remember, don't let third wave coffee professionals ruin your mocha pot experience. That's including us. Also, it's important, you've mentioned this, I'm sure, but it's important that you just have good coffee. No, I didn't I didn't yeah. actually mention the fact that you yeah. make good coffee. No. I would say probably the two most important things with any coffee recipe, but the mocha pot in, in particular is that you have good water. Shout out to Maxwell and his peak or third wave and a really nice coffee. And then you can go no wrong really. Hmm. We've what we've had a couple of days now of breakfast with our mocha pot and every time it's tasted good. I've already mentioned water and coffee. Obviously. Well, then just, I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. just remember, everybody, brew this what all... This is wait, wait, just, let's try it together. And just, just remember, remember everybody, everybody, brew what makes... Just, and just, just remember, remember everybody, everybody, this is just advice. <laughs> <laughs> just remember, everybody, this, this is, is all just, just advice. advice. <laughs> brew what makes, makes you happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> just remember, everybody... This, this is, is all just, just advice. This is just, just oh, this is all just okay. advice. <laughs> just and everybody, one thing, last thing to remember. This, this is, is all just, just advice. advice. Brew, Brew what, what makes, makes you happy. happy.